zero. And launch of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket as NASA turns to the private sector to resupply the International Space Station. A future where we are a spacefaring civilization is a far more exciting and inspiring future than one where we are, are not. Capture is confirmed. Uh, Houston Station looks like we got us a dragon by the tail. Our long-term goal is to be able to develop the technology to transport millions of people to Mars, which will preserve the future of humanity in the event of a calamity on, on Earth. I absolutely think we want to have a future where humanity is um, out there exploring the stars and where we have human civilization on multiple planets. When the U.S. government decided to stop funding the space race, the co-founder of PayPal and Tesla Motors, Elon Musk, stepped up to the plate. He invested $100 million of his own money into SpaceX. I was able to sit down with Elon at his headquarters in Southern California to talk about how he is making space exploration possible for the next generation. The big breakthrough that we're hoping to achieve at SpaceX is to create um, a, a fully and rapidly reusable rocket. The reason that's so important is that the, the cost of the fuel and the oxygen in the rocket is very low. It's actually only about 0.3% of the cost of the rocket. The cost of our rocket is $60 million, but the cost of our, of our propellant is only about $200,000. So if we're able to reuse the rocket, there could be a dramatic reduction in the, in the cost of uh, space flight. And what inspired you to do this? When I was a kid, I, I, I thought about um, what would most affect the future of humanity, and I, and I think, um, I think it's, it's fair to say and probably pretty obvious uh, to most that um, a future where we are a space-faring civilization is a far more exciting and inspiring future than one where we are, are not. And even though in, in the Apollo uh, era when uh, we sent astronauts to the moon and only a handful of people went to the moon, in, in effect we all went there vicariously. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Why is space exploration important? Should we, shouldn't we be focusing on what's going on here? I largely agree that we should have 99% um, you know, plus of our energy focused on solving problems on Earth. Um, but I think we need to uh, preserve a small amount for a future beyond Earth. You know, you can say, well, how much money should we spend on um, extending humanity into space? And, and certainly it should be far less than we spend on healthcare. Um, but maybe more than we spend on lipstick. Um, and I, I, I like lipstick, you know, so, so I don't, no, no, I not, do no, 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 no knock on that. I, I'm a fan of it. I'm just saying um, that, you know, we should, it's probably somewhere in between those two numbers and, and, um, uh, and you know, probably towards, towards, towards the lower end, actually, in terms of expenditures. So you said that you, your goal is to eventually take a million people to Mars. M uh, millions, yeah. How, uh, but isn't that going to be expensive? How yeah, are people going to be able to afford that? The key threshold, I think, um, is, is half a million dollars to move to Mars. Why is that? In, in order to achieve that, you have to, first of all, have a fully reusable system that can travel to Mars and back, and you have to pick the right uh, propellant combination. And I think with, with methane, uh, methane oxygen, you can do it. If someone were to work hard, save their money, and really have that as their goal, that by the time they, they hit their sort of uh, mid, mid to late 40s, most people in America could, could do that, if that so was I their goal. So I start saving up right now. Yeah, and then of course you'd sell your house uh, and, and all your belongings on Earth That's because true. You know, you're moving to Mars. It, it's not, it's, I mean obviously a half million dollars for a vacation is, would be crazy, but if you want to move there, you would sell your you sell, you, Yeah, you don't need your, your house on Earth, that's for sure. You can have a free return ticket, by the way. The return, because we need the spacecraft back, so. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times, actually, people will embark upon trying to solve a problem where success is not one of the possible outcomes. Um, in this case, I think success is one of the possible outcomes. That doesn't mean we will achieve it, but I'm confident at this point it is possible. While half a million dollars sounds expensive, remember that the Russians once offered trips for $35 million just to go to the space station. While creating a civilization on Mars sounds a little tough, it's certainly not going to stop Elon Musk from achieving his dream of one day colonizing the red planet. What advice do you have for young people who are trying to get into this industry? I do think uh, uh, more people should study engineering and science, and um, actually I'd say particularly engineering, 
Because engineering is uh, I mean, the closest thing to magic that exists in the real world. Engineering is creating some new device that, or, that, that never existed before. Um, and that, that can do things uh, today that, that would be considered magic hundreds of years ago. It's, it's pretty amazing what, um, what, what we can do. We can create images you know, and, and do holograms and things like that. Um, and, and all of these things would have gotten you burnt at the stake um, you know, 300 years ago. What is the next gold rush? What's the next dot-com for young people? What industry should they be looking into? Well, I, I, think, I think there are opportunities in energy, sustainable energy, uh, in um, artificial intelligence, in, um, in genetics. Those are probably the three, the three big areas. And what advice do you have for young people who are trying to get their startups off the ground? I, I think the, the, the thing to do is to try to create a, a demonstration article. Everything works on PowerPoint, but if you actually have the physical item or the software, you know, some demonstration software, that, that's much more convincing to people than a PowerPoint presentation or, or any business plan. Do you have an internship program here? Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so we, we hire actually quite a few interns, uh, usually a couple hundred a year. And we're, we're generally looking for evidence of exceptional ability. So, um, you know, has somebody uh, competed in like a design build fly competition or uh, Formula SAE racing, won a state s a science fair. What did they do that sort of is evidence of exceptional ability in, in one form or another? Uh, GPA is just one, one element, um, actually puts slightly higher weighting on having won some sort of competition. So someone told me before this interview that you work in a cubicle. Is that well, true? I have a desk, yeah. Why did you decide to do that? Well, I think it's important to maximize communication. You know, I'm much more sort of of the uh, sort of the, the, the Spartan school of thought. Um, so I, I care about effective execution at the company. And the more you insulate yourself from information or, or, or feedback in the company, the worse decisions you make. This is the third successful venture for Elon Musk. He's got degrees in both physics and business, and he promotes science as a pathway to success for the next generation. How does a recession affect a company like SpaceX? Have you all been affected? The recession? Um, we've actually done reason reasonably well, actually. And um, in California. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we've, we've done fairly well. Uh, we, we've continued to grow uh, throughout the recession, and um, yeah, it, it really, really hasn't had a negative effect on SpaceX. We might have grown slightly faster, but, but we grew very fast. And I debated whether to start SpaceX in Silicon Valley or uh, Southern California. And in the end, I decided to do Southern California because there's a larger base of aerospace engineering talent in Southern California. But then with Tesla, uh, Tesla actually does fit more in, in, in Northern California because electric cars, if you think about the problems that are associated with that, you know, it's sort of software engineering, electrical engineering, it's, it's batteries, skills that are actually better uh, in Northern California. California as a state needs to be cautious about um, the level of taxation and regulation that, that it applies to companies. Yeah, that's why I'm surprised that you're based here. Well, <laughs> you know, w when I started the two companies, the California max, the, the, t the marginal tax rate in California was 9%. I think it's now almost 14%, so that's a 50% increase since I started the companies. Um, and it's, it makes it progressively harder to, to hire people um, and to, to compensate them competitively. Um, if, if we're competing against companies that are in states that have zero to low personal tax or in countries that um, are, um, are much cheaper to operate in, it's fortunate that California is, is, is a great place to live. California has to be careful not to, to over-regulate companies in, in the state and make it difficult to operate. So you don't patent your technology. Why is that? Why did you make that decision? Well, at, at SpaceX we don't patent, at Tesla we do. Um, we don't patent anything that's hard to, to determine just by looking at the rockets. If you can understand the um, technology just by looking at the rocket, then, then we will sometimes issue a patent. What we won't patent is anything that's hidden or hard to determine about our technology. R Russia today and China long term are our toughest competitors, and I think we would have some, some challenge enforcing a patent suit against the Chinese or Russian government. So up until recently, when people think of space exploration, they think that that is the role of the federal government. Sure. Do you think that your business, your company, is just as capable or perhaps more capable? Well, I, I, think, I think that the, the likely uh, solution is going to be some combination of a, 
of a private and, and government effort. So not completely privatized? No, I, I don't think it's likely to be completely privatized, I, but I do think it's likely to be majority private. And government can be quite helpful in, in the beginning. While I'm you know, very much a proponent of the, of the free market, there is a limited role for government in, in certain, certain areas, um, particularly where it's a large expenditure, but it provides a small amount of good for the whole, the whole country. Something like the, the Hubble Space Telescope is a good example. Um, you know, we, we learned a great deal about, about the universe. We got these incredible images, and they were just sort of these stunning images. And I think it really you know, was helpful in inspiring kids to study engineering and science and that kind of thing, and to learn more about that. And life has to be about more than just solving problems. It can't be that all you, all you do every day is wake up and just sort of solve one miserable problem or another. They have to be exciting and inspiring events that make life worth living in the first place. Against all odds, Elon Musk is inspiring a new generation of explorers and innovators who believe that space travel is possible for everyday people, not in some faraway time, but in the very near future. For Next Generation TV, I'm Michelle Fields. Thank you.